Welcome to this audio flip chart on market timing theory versus trade-off theory of the capital structure. My name is Manfred Fulwirt. I'm professor of finance at WU Wien, which is Vienna University of Economics and Business. The purpose of this audio flip chart is to illustrate how managers react with the capital structure of their company after the stock price has gone up. On this occasion, we will contrast the forecast from the trade-off theory with the forecast from the market timing theory and with the actual decisions that managers make in practice. Therefore, in this audio flip chart, we are comparing the standard corporate finance view, the behavioral corporate finance view and industry practice. First of all, what matters in capital structure theory is the capital structure measured at market values and not the one at book values. Therefore, all symbols used in this audio flip chart represent market values. On the flip chart, we use the symbol D for the volume of debt and the symbol V for the total value of the firm which is the volume of debt and equity together. We see on the horizontal axis the debt ratio, which is the volume of debt divided by the total value of the firm, so D over V. As we are going to the right, we are increasing the financial leverage. The optimal capital structure is the one that gives the highest business value. As the business value is determined by discounting the free cash flows and the terminal value with the weighted average cost of capital, short WAC, the optimal capital structure is also the capital structure that provides the smallest WAC. On this flip chart, we see the weighted average cost of capital on the vertical axis. One of the most important and intuitive capital structure theories in standard corporate finance is the trade-off theory. This theory says that when selecting the capital structure, there is a conflict between taxes and bankruptcy costs. Concerning taxes, the underlying fact is that debt interest payments are deducted from the tax base. So debt interest payments are creating a so-called tax shield. Now, when we are increasing the debt ratio, automatically the debt interest payments go up. And so do the tax shields. Therefore, with a higher debt ratio, our tax burden goes down. As the WAC includes the tax shield effect, you multiply the cost of debt by one minus the tax rate, the increase in the debt ratio also brings down the WAC. On the other hand, when we are increasing the debt ratio, due to the higher volume of debt, the probability of bankruptcy goes up. And bankruptcy creates inefficiencies. These inefficiencies are called bankruptcy costs. Typical examples of bankruptcy costs are fees for attorneys or court filing fees during the bankruptcy process. But there are also so-called indirect bankruptcy costs. Indirect bankruptcy costs are the costs of avoiding a bankruptcy filing. The expected bankruptcy costs raise the WAC. As a high volume of debt makes bankruptcy more likely, this happens especially in the range of large debt ratios, so on the right-hand side of the chart. The optimal capital structure is the one that optimally balances the positive tax shield effect and the negative bankruptcy cost effect. On the flip chart, the optimal capital structure is marked by an asterisk. 
compared to the optimal capital structure, if the firm is using a lower debt ratio, then it could reduce the work by borrowing more and enjoying higher tax shields. In that case, the benefit from higher tax shields exceeds the damage from higher expected bankruptcy costs. If, however, the firm is using a higher debt ratio than with the optimal capital structure, then it is already in the area where the higher expected bankruptcy costs from additional debt exceed the benefits from higher tax shields. Therefore, by reducing the debt ratio, the firm could decrease the WAC. Now, let us imagine that this company originally has selected the optimal capital structure. So the managers are using the debt ratio D over V as the risk. Let us also imagine that after the choice of the optimal capital structure, the stock price of that company goes up. This, of course, increases the market capitalization of that firm which is the market value of equity, and thereby also the total value of the firm. However, the volume of debt is unaffected. As a result, the market value equity ratio goes up and the market value debt ratio goes down. So on our flip chart, this stock price increase automatically shifts the firm to the left. This is shown by the black arrow. As we can see from the chart, this raises the WAC. The company now has a too small debt ratio and therefore is losing tax shields compared to the optimal capital structure. The big question now is, how do the managers react to this situation? According to the trade-off theory, the answer is pretty clear. The managers immediately have to make arrangements in order to re-establish the optimal capital structure. This is part of their job. In this particular situation, this would mean that they have to increase the debt ratio. This is shown by the green arrow on the flip chart. This could easily be done by borrowing money from the bank or by tapping the bond market and using this money in order to buy back their own shares. This would restore the original capital structure and bring back the WAC to the original minimum value as shown in green. Now, another very intuitive capital structure theory is the market timing theory of capital structure. This is a capital structure theory within behavioral corporate finance that has been developed by Malcolm Baker and Jeffrey Wergler in 2002. It is interesting to see that the market timing theory comes to a completely different conclusion. According to the market timing theory, the managers do not re-establish the original optimal capital structure. By contrast, after the stock price has increased, they consider their stock now as more expensive than before and therefore as overvalued. Following the market timing goal, they rather issue stocks instead of buying them back. By this, they are moving the capital structure even further away from the optimal capital structure. On the flip chart, this is shown by the red arrow. And this raises the WAC even more. Now the question is, which of these two opposing theories is right? If you look into reality, there are several surveys that show that managers are very much following the market timing theory. One example is the study from Graham Harvey, 2001, shown on page 2. Here we have a table 
that includes the answers of the managers to the question what factors affect your firm's decision about issuing common stock. As we can see from this table, about 67% of managers indicate as an important or very important factor the amount by which our stock is undervalued or overvalued by the market. As we can see, this is the factor that takes the second place in the ranking of all factors. In addition, more than 60% of the managers say that an important argument for issuing common stock is that the stock price has recently risen and therefore the company can sell stocks at a high price. So these managers definitely would not buy back but rather issue new shares after a stock price increase. Thereby, they would clearly violate the prediction of the trade-off theory. Another example is provided by the study from Braff et al. 2005. Page 3 refers to this study. Here, the authors analyzed the reasons why managers are buying back their own shares from the capital market. As we can see from this table, 86% of the managers indicated that the stock price was an important or very important factor in the stock repurchase decision. Managers are buying back their own shares if they are cheap relative to the true value. So we can assume that these 86% of the managers would not follow the prediction of the trade-off theory to buy back shares after the stock price has increased, as mentioned before. So these two examples show that the managers in practice rather follow the market timing theory than the trade-off theory. Baker Wurgler 2002 show empirically that changes in the stock price have a significant impact on the capital structure and that it takes many years until this effect vanishes. After all, the capital structure of a company at a given point in time is the result of the manager's capital transactions throughout the years before. Companies with a low debt ratio are those companies that had to finance externally at times with a high stock price. Then they selected equity as a financing instrument and the resulting high equity ratio is kept for many years. By contrast, firms with a high debt ratio are those firms that had to finance at times with a low stock price. Then they selected debt as a financing instrument and the resulting high debt ratio is maintained for many years. Summing up, we could see in this audio flip chart that two very intuitive finance theories lead to completely opposing conclusions concerning how managers react to an increase in the stock price. The trade-off theory concludes that the managers will buy back their own shares from the capital market. By contrast, the market timing theory says that the managers will issue additional shares. Also, we saw that there is significant empirical evidence that shows that the market timing theory provides a good explanation how managers determine their capital structure in practice. I hope you enjoyed this audio flip chart. Thank you very much for watching.